Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Video Chess, which was a 1979 release for the Atari 2600, programmed by Larry Wagner and Bob Whitehead, both of whom went on to work for Activision. Now, the urban myth behind the creation of Video Chess as a release for the Atari 2600 is that the original Atari VCS, when it was first released, uh, had a picture of a chess piece on the box. And supposedly, a Florida man, because of course a Florida man, uh, sued Atari because of the fact that there were no chess games available for the platform despite the fact this chess piece was visible on the box, and he felt this was false advertising. Now, in a 2007 interview, Bob Whitehead said that he was not aware of any such lawsuit happening. So it may well be that this is just one of those stories that has sort of risen up in popular mythology and uh, never actually had any truth to it. But uh, I guess we'll never know at this point. Video chess is noteworthy for its pioneering use of a technique called Venetian blind, which allows more sprites on screen than the Atari 2600 was previously thought capable of. And this effect went on to be used in various other games on the Atari 2600 and uh, particularly text-based games as well. If you remember Stellar Track that we looked at, that also used the Venetian blind effect to put text on the screen. It provided that sort of flickering effect, but it allowed for much more complex visuals such as text that you wouldn't normally see on the Atari 2600. Video Chess was also noteworthy for its original prototype cartridge using 8K of bank switched ROM instead of the normal 4K for Atari 2600 cartridges. Now the final release ended up being squeezed into 4K, but the bank switching technology went on to be used in various other Atari 2600 games that needed a little bit more capacity. And Video Chess was also praised on its original release for incorporating a number of often forgotten chess rules such as castling and en passant capturing but it was criticized for only offering a single player game. But that's fine by me because I'm terrible at chess, so it's uh, much better to be humiliated by the computer than by a real person. So let's go observe that, shall we? Let's go play video chess. Okay, welcome back once again to Atari Flashback Classics, where today we're taking a look at video chess, a game program with eight video games, skill levels beginner to expert, and one player special edition. As always, let's take a look at the manual first of all. Use your joystick controller, blah, 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 blah. As one of man's oldest war games, chess is believed to have originated in India between 350 to 400 AD. The first written record of the game was in 700 AD. There are many variations of chess played throughout the world. In any chess game, the object is to capture the opponent's king. The computer sets up the pieces on the board in their proper order. Each player begins with 16 pieces. One king, one king, <clears throat> one king, one queen, two rooks, two bishops, two knights, eight pawns. Each piece has a distinctive move which is peculiar to itself. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's how all the pieces move. So if you don't know how to play chess, you can find out from this, which is nice. Uh, how to capture pieces. Uh, double moves. Yeah, this is, this is the bit I was talking about where um, people praise this for incorporating some moves that other chess programs of the time often forgot about or didn't know how to implement properly. So here we are. There are two double moves allowed in the game of chess. One is known as casting, the other is known as en passant. The video chess computer may use either or both during the course of the game and you can also. Casting can be an offensive or defensive move. To castle, the squares between the king and one of the rooks must be clear. The king or the rook may not have been moved previously. This move protects the king and moves the rook to the centre of the board where it can be more effective. When you set up the board as described, move your king two spaces to the right or left depending on which way you're casting and push the red controller button. The computer will automatically bring the rook around the king, thereby completing your casting move. The computer will then think its next move. Uh, en passant, this move is used to counterattack the enemy pawn's initial double move on an adjacent tile. To carry out the en passant, you must advance your pawn to the fifth rank. Your opponent then has the option of moving his or her pawn in one square where it would be under attack, or two squares. If your opponent elects to move two squares, the en passant move allows you to take that pawn by diagonally moving your pawn to the square that was skipped over. Okay, fair enough. So, there are seven skill levels in this chess game. Um, levels one through seven, and one through one level for beginners, level eight. As the levels increase from one to seven, the computer will take longer to compute its next move. The times listed below for each skill level are an average since the length of time will depend on the complexity of the board and the level chosen. Level 8 is an excellent game for beginners to learn the moves as well as some of the strategies of the game. And you'll see here, 
um, this is how long it takes the 2600 to calculate its next move on average not every turn but on average um, this is uh, <laughs> this is how long it takes so level 1 15 seconds all the way up to level 10 10 hours <laughs> oh, I would love to know if anyone actually played this game at level 7 back in the day and had to wait 10 hours for it to calculate its next move oh Right, I'm absolutely fucking terrible at TS, uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that as we speak. I'm going to play on the beginner level, if it's supposedly so good for people who are not good at chess. Um, and uh, probably humiliate myself, because as I say, uh, I really... I, 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 know, I know all the moves of chess, I just don't know the strategy at all. So, let's give it a go. Level 8. Right. Um, first thing you might notice on this is all the pieces are stripy. Um, and if you look very, very closely, you can see that um, the sprites are sort of alternating lines. So if you look at, say, the rook in the bottom left corner and then look at the knight next to it, you'll notice that the knight is offset from the rook by about a pixel. That's the Venetian blind effect we were talking about. So in this case, it doesn't flicker as it did in stuff like stellar track that we mentioned in the in the intro um but the idea of using venetian blinds effects and then rapidly flickering back and forth between the two of them uh, was also a means of getting more stuff on the screen than you would otherwise normally be able to do so and the flickering would be less visible on a crt television because well they flicker anyway so but anyway this is this is what video chess looks like um right so i i am so sort of useless at chess i don't even really know what a good opening is i did look up a couple before uh, we started here and it looks like there are several sort of established openings that involve taking the pawn that's in front of the king and going there so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with that for now and there the colors flash and we see the computer take their move so the colours are flashing while the uh, while the 2600 is calculating its next move. Um, we've talked about this a few times before. Um, on both the 2600 and the Atari 8-bit computers, they could calculate things more quickly if they didn't have to update the screen display. Um, and so what would tend to happen on the Atari 8-bit is there was a poke you could do to a particular location in memory, number 559 if you're curious. Um, if you poked zero into that, uh, it would turn the screen off and it would mean that any calculations it had to do uh, were much quicker because it wasn't using any of its processing time on updating the screen. On the case of the 2600, it seems like that wasn't an option. So what we often got is a sort of visual depiction on the screen of what the of what the cpu was thinking about at the time so the different colors that are cycling through there are a visual representation of the computer thinking basically uh right so what do we do then uh, i'm going to take this bishop and pop him right there Computer's then going to put a hoss there. Uh, right, so where could he possibly end up? So he could move there and there. So th those pe those spaces are already dangerous because of the um, because of the pawn. He could also go there or there. So we want to avoid those areas really. Um. Right, if I bring this pawn out to open up my other bishop, what happens then? So if I move that forward, nothing can capture him immediately, I don't think. But I can get the bishop out, which is helpful, I guess. So, as I say, I have no idea if these are good moves or not. Uh, because the limit of my chess knowledge is how the pieces move. <laughs> ah, now he seems to have sort of almost anticipated what I was thinking of doing with my bishop there which was bringing it here 
um, because he can capture that bishop if, if I do that um, if I move him there though is that a problem? yes because the queen can capture it okay uh, alright let's not do that then let's instead how about we go here is that any good not in danger from anything I don't think don't know if that's strategically advantageous at all um, but it does, it does stop the knight advancing which is probably quite helpful all right we'll do that now he's brought a pawn forward there um, now I can capture that pawn with either the pawn or the bishop uh, but if I do that the queen will come down and get him which is probably not what we want although if the queen does come down and get them we could in theory take her out with the other one of these pieces now the question is on beginner level is the computer going to be stupid enough to take that bait only one way to find out No, no, he is not. Uh, he is instead putting the knight there, where he can be taken by a bishop. Um, however, he is protected by both of those pawns. Which is not ideal. Um, so at the moment, he can go down here or here that one's definitely bad for the king but the queen can get it from there uh, what about if I threaten him with this ok so king's in check but we can do that and everything's fine right so he's getting his next knight out now uh, we can't do much about that yet so what I think I might do I'll get my knight out okay so he's come there again that's vulnerable but then if the bishop takes that he'll get taken by the queen and there's nothing to protect is that worth doing now because knights can be a right pain in the ass What's he going to take if he stays there? He's probably going to take that bishop, isn't he? But if I go there, I'm definitely going to lose that bishop. And I can't take the queen if she comes down. So it might just be best to... Take this and move it... Oh no, because that can be taken by the, um, the pawn then, can't it? Oh, this is difficult. This is difficult. <laughs> right, so this bishop, if I move him there, he'll get taken by the pawn, which we don't want. If I move him here and capture this pawn, he'll get taken by the bishop on the black squares 
which we also don't want. Uh, if I take the knight with the bishop, he'll get taken by the queen, and we can't do anything about that, and that gets their queen out, which we don't want. Um, so there's no really good options here. Uh, unless I sacrifice that pawn in the middle. Is that worth doing? Hmm. That said, if he does capture that bishop, he's open to attack from the pawn. Um, you know what, I might take this opportunity to castle. There we go. Right, so he's bringing the bishop down. Uh, again, not very much we can do about that at the moment. Uh, what I can... Hmm, hang on. Hang on. If I take this knight and go here, I don't think he's vulnerable to anything. I've probably missed something. Blindingly obvious. And you're probably yelling at your television right now. But, you know... I did warn you. I did warn you. Right. Uh, so that bishop is now covering that pawn. So I can't really attack that pawn. The other bishop is covering the knight. So I can't really attack the knight either. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Uh, maybe it's time to get the other knight out. So if he comes out and goes here, he can't get got by anything because there's a pawn in the way of the bishop. Alright, let's do that. Alright, he's casting as well. Fair enough. If you must. Right, if I bring this knight up here, he can't get attacked by anything either. What is that rook going to do? That rook can't do anything at the minute. Okay, let's advance with the knight. Okay, he's trying to get the rook out, but not much is going to happen on that front. Uh, this knight... He can't go here because the queen will get him. He can't go here because the queen will get him. And he can't go here because the rook will get him. Uh, so he's just going to... He's just going to sit there for now. And apply a bit of pressure. Maybe do something with this bishop. So this bishop could come up here. No, he can get caught by a pawn then. Alright, if he goes there, he's vulnerable to the knight. If he goes there, he's vulnerable to the bishop. And if he goes there, he's vulnerable to the pawn. Yeah, so no point moving him at the moment. Um...
Maybe just time to start getting some more pawns out. Two. Advance the defensive line, as it were. Right, so he took that. And I can't really reach him from there, so that's a little bit awkward. That's... That's awkward. I won't lie, that's awkward. Because uh, he could take that rook next turn. Which is not what we want. Oh, he can also take the bloody queen, can't he? Right, what if I protect that rook with the queen? If I take the queen and put the queen here, even if he takes the rook, I can then take him with the queen. Um, and the queen isn't vulnerable to anything else there, so I think that might be my best bet for the minute. He's almost certainly going to take that rook. Yep, yeah, there we go. Alright, but then I can do this. And that's dealt with both his knights. Okay. Just chipping away at him slowly. Now what? is the question oh hello um, that bishop is now vulnerable to the other bishop but if I go here we'll get captured by pawn but is that an acceptable sacrifice to get rid of his bishop I lost a bishop already when did I lose that bishop oh the the knight took him the knight took him. Oh, is this a worthwhile sacrifice? Is this a worthwhile sacrifice? That is the question. If he comes down and takes that bishop, he can get taken by a pawn, though. Is that in my favour or his favour? Hard to say. I don't really want to lose my other bishop. Is the thing. Um. But I'm going to lose it either way. If I don't do something with him. I'm going to lose him either way. So I may as well do some damage yep obviously okay now what who is in danger is anyone in danger don't think anyone is in danger In that case, let's take a step forward. Alright, here comes a brook. What is he planning? Is he going to take that pawn? Because if so, I can take him with my queen. So he wouldn't be that stupid, surely. Surely he wouldn't be that stupid. Stupid idiot. Um, right, if this guy goes here, is he in danger? Oh, he's in danger from the pawn there, isn't he? Forget that. What about, no, he's in danger from a pawn there as well. Bloody pawns! They get everywhere. Oh, 
I don't know. I don't know how to play this game properly. <laughs> It's difficult. I'm going to bring out this rook. I'm going to pop him to there so he's got slightly easier access to everything. And I've probably missed something obvious. No, he's doing kind of what I expected him to. I don't know why I'm so surprised about him doing stupid moves on the beginner level. But that is what is happening. Okay, I can now move here and put both the queen and the rook in danger. Yes, very good. Now, my queen is in danger uh, from that bishop, obviously. If I move there, no, that's fine. There's no reason not to do that. I don't think. Okay, so... Hmm. Hmm. Now the queen is in danger. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Right, I could take the queen, but I will lose the queen in the process. Is that something I'm willing to do? Because if I move her out of the way, she's going to take that knight instead. And the knight can take the rook. No, but the rook will take my queen. That, that's that's the whole point of what I'm mulling over. Um, oh, no. I don't see many other options, though. This feels like a stupid move. This feels like a stupid move, but we'll see what happens. Of course. Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, okay. So he, he is very short on pieces now. He does not have many pieces left. Um, but how do I take advantage of that is the question. If I can bait his rook into something stupid, that would be nice. Can I bait his rook with this pawn, is the question. And is he stupid enough to fall for this? Is he stupid enough to fall for this? No, he's not. Um, what does that achieve? What was that done for him? Not much. Not much at all. I want to bait him. <laughs> <laughs> He, he can't take anything else from there. He can move to the side, obviously. Uh, 
All right, well. Okay, that seems like a peculiar move, but. What the heck? Okay, Rook going back to protect his back, which makes sense. Um, let's advance this pawn. See if we can get a promotion. Rook coming down again. Going around in circles. You are not taking him. No, you are not. And he's back up there again. Right, if I now advance the pawn, the rook will take him. So, we need to not do that. Right, what can I do with these knights? He can go there and be pretty safe, I think. So let's do that. Coward, fight like a robot. I don't know if this is a good game of chess or not. I feel like I'm winning, but I can never be sure. I can never be entirely sure. All right, tell you what. If that goes there, the king is in check. And the rook can't take him because rooks can't go diagonally. Right, king has now moved there, which means he can take the knight, uh, which is okay. Because all we need to do is move out of his way. No, that's all right. Let's go back here. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? He's launching an all-out assault. <laughs> Stop him, he's gone mad. This is madness. What is what is he doing? What is he doing and why? That's not how night moves. Okay, okay. I should probably kill that rook, shouldn't I? Good. Good. I'm feeling good. All right. How about we promote this pawn? Oh, 
he's, he's trying to protect himself he really is But is he prepared for an assault from the rear? It's coming from inside the base. Tum -ti -tum -ti -tum. Oh, he's going to take that now, isn't he? That was stupid. That was dumb. Why did I do that? Overconfidence. I win! Alright, I'm satisfied with that. I beat the beginner level of video chess. Um, I'm not going to pretend that was a uh, a good win. But it was a win, and I'm thus I'm going to count it. <laughs> so, like I say, this this is, I mean, it's fairly no frills so far as chess programs go. There's no sort of fancy notation or anything like that. But um, you can also use it to set up your own sort of chess problems and things, like most of the board game adaptations on the twenty six hundred you can use the difficulty switches to switch the game into board layout mode so if you've got a chess problem you want to try and solve you can do that to set up the board however you see fit uh, and then yeah anyway i'm happy with that because i thought i was going to end in horrible failure especially after that um after that last move but it turns out turns out my rook's brave sacrifice was not in vain after all Anyway, let's leave that there for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.